Um, got my cards, and I've got, I need to rave about this a second. I've got this, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's vanilla oat milk matcha green tea latte. I sound like a fucking basic bitch, kind of, saying that, but I'm pretty sure that that's just like an American thing, because in other countries, I'm, like in Japan and stuff, I'm pretty sure that this is like a big thing. Um, at least putting matcha in different stuff, but I'm pretty sure that like having it the way that I'm having it, having a matcha latte, having it be a vanilla matcha latte, having it be with oat milk, um, it's so good. And this is just mixed with water. I didn't realize how good this would be. I bought it from Ross, which I, is a store I never go to. Uh, my last client's sister had happened to go and I went with her um, and they had it on sale for $7 for an 8.5 ounce bag. And I was like, eh, you know, that seems pretty reasonable, like a reasonable price. I actually wasn't sure how pricey it was. It seemed like it's more money than I would generally spend on like a mixed drink, but at the same time, like it's not that much more. It seemed pretty reasonable, right? Plus because it like was kind of fancy. It's so good. It's so good. And now I've been, I've used it all and I've been looking for it online. And one, I can't even find this one left anywhere. I can't even find this one anywhere. Um, and not the same, not the same one that I had. Um, the one time that I found it, it was with another one. Like they must just be, they must have ended it. Like stopped, stopped making it. Um, there is one left and it was sold with another kind of matcha green tea latte and it was like $50 and like most of them when I'm looking at them they're like it's like $10 for an ounce a single ounce which is wild to me but it is so good and it makes me feel so good and I love it so much and you can mix it with coffee which is also absolutely delicious, and it makes your coffee green, which is kind of cool. Um, but the vanilla, this specific one too, because I've looked at the ingredients in other ones, um, even the vanilla ones, and like, this one has multiple different types of artificial sweeteners, so it is very sweet, and it's like, very, very nice. Other ones just don't seem to have the same sort of ingredients, and I'm like, you know, weary to try them, you know, at $30 an ounce or whatever um, and not like it as much as this one but then again I didn't think I didn't know if I was gonna like this one as much and I love it so recommendation get yourself some uh, green tea matcha um, matcha green tea of the vanilla and it's a latte so it's like creamier that's what the oat milk is for is to make it creamy um, I suppose you could add your own oat milk or whatever kind of milk you wanted to add, really. Um, the oat milk, I mean, it's just because it came like that. Um, but I think that that's actually kind of nice because the nuttiness with the sweetness and stuff makes it... It's just very good. It's very good. And being able to drink it first thing this morning, like, makes... I was very excited. I was, like, waiting to do it. And I was like, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do a reading. I haven't done readings like this, by the way, like, consistently... Prior to making these couple videos that I've made, I'd probably done two readings myself. The rest of the time, I had just, and it's only been for a couple years, I've like randomly watched general tarot readings on YouTube. Um, and what I learned from that was that it does work, build on my intuition because not everything out there is going to apply to me and is going to make sense. And there's different ones that resonate and different ones that don't. And so, like, I kind of explained it in my last video, but like I learned um, the way that tarot kind of works and I learned like the way that the cards tend to be kind of red and the meaning of different things. But more than anything, it was like an energetic thing of watching how other people can put themselves in and out of these types of energies. And um, sometimes there are extremely direct messages. And I do believe in that when it comes to the collective, like... Um, you know, there's things that I've like, like poetry or like random things that I've said or random things that I've posted on my social media that like might have felt some way for me, but was kind of almost just like almost thoughtless and, and, you know, coming from me, 
but it deeply resonated with someone else. And it was like, well, yeah, that's because it was for you, you know, and I do believe that that's how the divine works. I believe that, um, source energy is always, I don't know why I said that like that, always present and always, I said it weird, always present and always accessible and that it's on the individual to tap in themselves um, in order to garnish from it what they will. And, you know, I think that it's important really that we do that um, personally. I need to quit fucking with my cactus. I love them. Okay, so I think it's important. I get so distracted by these plants. I love you guys. I love you guys. I'm sorry. It's because I'm not giving you enough attention, I feel like. Um, just in the day to day. Um, Bob Dylan had said it at one point where like something along the lines of there being a source energy um, that kind of just like flows through all of reality and that creators, artists are creators and that they're the ones that choose to uh, kind of pull from that stream and that there's a collective consciousness in that way where like I could pull the same message from source. I could pull the same message from that conscious stream um, that someone else does a million miles away. And um, it, could, it could be the exact same message or it could be something slightly different put in my own personal way. That's kind of what makes art. Like it's never just that it's coming from one individual and that's it. It's actually always coming from source creator. It's always coming from source energy. It's always coming from this source stream of consciousness um and then everybody's able to pull from it i had <laughs> sorry i'm all over the place right now i had the weirdest dream last night like i said i've been having crazy dreams but in this dream it was really really vivid and there was a lot going on and it was like action-packed and i was like running for my life and part of it like this girl I'd met in Missouri, um, I'd spent the week with a, with a few girls and a guy uh, on his farm. Um, he had he had people staying, and this group just happened to be a whole bunch of women that lived out of their vans, um, and one of them had a bus. And uh, I stayed with them for a week last year, and this one girl in particular, I had gone to her hometown with her. Um, and spent the night with her there, you know, where she was like trying to um, just work out some different different things. And I was there with her for it. Um, it was quite an interesting time for me. Um, it was really impactful, um, extremely enlightening. I was able to really, because, and because of her energy and like her grandmother at one point, um, like came and spoke to me through a bee. I know this probably sounds weird to a lot of different people. Um, maybe to a lot of different people, they totally get it. And I appreciate that. Um, I have experiences like this in my life that like, I don't try to explain any further than just experiencing them for what they're worth and being like, okay, that's what it was. Um, she and I had already bonded over her grandmother. And then like the following day or a couple days later, we happened to be talking about um, some dark stuff. And she was like, and I was being pretty straightforward about the messages I was receiving and like about like the perception that I had of things and the, the, the knowledge that I had of things. And she was like, I've only had this type of conversation with one other person. And it's like actually kind of uncomfortable and really wild to me because like, I don't, I'm not used to people talking about these things, especially not so openly. Like normally people try to mask what they're talking about and you're being like straight on forward and just like talking about it. And it was like one of those matrix types of conversations. Right. And I, I know, I know um, what it's like, how weird it is when people you barely know start talking like that. Um, it's surreal. It's like, it's like playing Skyrim and then having like one of the characters start talking about 
instead of talking about Skyrim, they're talking about like the state of the game in which you're playing and like it being like very like fourth wall breaking, like very, it's wild. Um, and at the time, like, and like we were talking about family and we were even talking about her grandmother. All of a sudden this bee came up and was like, hey bitch. <laughs> and like this bee literally came in between us, like in between our direct she was sitting on the ground and I was sitting in a chair and we were looking at each other while we were talking. And this bee came directly in between where we were sitting and like both of us looked at it and it was looking straight at me and it was giving me like a, which was totally her grandmother's attitude when she had something to say, right? And that's how she had already explained it to me. And like, as soon as this bee came up, like I knew it was her grandmother and she was like, be careful what you say is what the bee said to me. Meanwhile, I say what the bee said to me. It's not like the bee actually spoke, but it did give me a message. Um, like, uh, I just downloaded it from the bee, right? Like, it's like that interaction triggered uh, a concept, a statement, words, specific things, images, whatever in my head. Um, I learned how to do that from this old ass hippie friend of mine who, um, like, she hugs trees and talks to trees and she's gone on all of these different adventures and journeys all over, uh, all over the U S I don't think she's been all over the world necessarily, but she's been all over the U S and she's communicated with all different types of plants and animals and been able to, she makes like art out of things. She has like old pieces of wood and old gemstones and old pieces of like hair or feathers and all this different stuff. And she makes incredible, beautiful art out of it. Um, and so she had told me, like she had taught me. And I remember when she was first teaching me, me being like, mm hmm, like, okay, I'm pretty open to listening to people. So I'm like, I get it. I get that that's something you do, but like, probably not something I'm going to do. Go talk in the trees. Um, but then I felt extremely led to at one point. Um, I was really depressed and I felt like I really needed to get out for a hike. And as soon as I got out, I like went by myself to this park and as soon as I got out there there was like this specific tree that just like was like hey try talking to us when you're out here like try it try communicating with nature a little bit and I talked to that tree and I talked to a bug and then all of a sudden all these trees and all these bugs started talking to me um and it was really moving and it was really enlightening and like I'm under the impression that these things are completely accessible to anybody as long as you just open yourself up to them that way um and it's so funny because being raised Christian, like I was taught, I was trained to don't open yourself to anything. Don't open yourself to anything but Yahweh, Jesus and Yahweh. Just like they're concepts that like don't even fit the mold that was, I was being trained into, right? So like me being genuinely like trying to be genuinely obedient and only keeping myself open to those things, but being such a sensitively, like having such a sensitive psyche to those things, like Jesus pulled me out of that bullshit. <laughs> like was like, this isn't, this isn't it. This is in fact what I came to get rid of. Um, so I think it's funny cause like the church, yeah, led me out of the church that way for sure. Um, and then I just kept opening myself. I don't open myself to just anything. I'm not an idiot. Like when I was growing up, my brother was doing dark witchcraft on me. And, you know, my mom like is obsessed with dark arts and like everything is demonic. And like, I'm not like that. Um, I take what resonates with me and what resonates with me on a high frequency. I don't like things bringing me down. I don't have a hard time getting down myself. So like, I don't need help. I don't like things that energetically do that. If it brings somebody else up, great. But if it brings me down, I'm not into it. That's why I've never like done most drugs. That's why I'm not like, like I know plenty of people that do that certain stuff all the time and it works for them and it's fine for them. And that's great. It's just not for me because I know myself and I kind of always have. And, um, even when I was completely lost, you know, as a kid growing up in the church and stuff like that, like I still kind of did know myself and my 
higher self was always leading me down those paths and you know down into the right into the right path for me which is just really like a mix of a bunch of different things but that's to say that like i'm not like so much of my knowledge of the occult has come through like and the occult being anything occult you know anything technically hidden the spiritual reality is occultic in its nature um but at the same time only to those that aren't actively engaged with it the second you actively engage with it it opens up for you so you know christianity had taught me like don't engage do not engage with those things that's all demonic everything's demonic we're like a large amount of the things that were being trained into me were if you were to ever have a true demonic concept that's what those things were you know the 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 power the um power struggle like the the ego satiation the you know like trying to the brainwashing straight brainwashing and learning how to brainwash others um yeah it's just not my cup of tea this matcha green tea though is is my cup of tea <laughs> and i'm so sad because this is the last one that's why i had to bring it up because this is the last one that's why i'm enjoying it so much right here right on camera i don't give a fuck it's so good and i love that it's green i love green um Good color, green, yellow, orange, love them, brown, brown, big fan of, big fan of them, earth tones. So yeah, so this isn't something that I like great with, right? It's not that I'm not great with it, it comes naturally, it's whatever, like, it's whatever you make it, everything is. You don't have to be a trained artist in order to be good at art. Um, it's really, that's the nature of art, it's just whatever comes out of you. Um, same thing with any sort of spiritualism. Art is a form of spiritualism. So like, you know. Also, I think I've been like wanting to do these more because I've been in this hotel room where I haven't been able to burn my sage. And that's something I have Palo Santo sage. Um, and then like these incest, incest, incense sticks. And lavender. And I haven't burnt any of the lavender yet. Um, but I've found that burning incense, and especially like actual herbs, I don't like incense sticks. Um, these strings that I got, these incense strings are um, hand woven and then dipped in essential oils. And they came from India and they're, they're very pleasant, but they're also extremely potent. Um, and so they kind of serve a separate purpose. I don't use them consistently, but like I could burn Palo Santo and sage every day. It is so cleansing for me. It is the smell of them like just just makes me feel alive. It makes me feel clean. It makes me feel bright. It makes me feel like clear headed. It makes me feel like full and warm in my heart. Um, and it's funny because that's something too that was demonized through the church yet God himself in, you know, back in like the Psalms and in different parts of uh, the Old Testament talks about the importance of burning different herbs um, because they please God. And my concept of God is, you know, um, we all have God in ourselves. We all are together God. And those things that please our most innate essence, like those things that like please like who like our most natural states, the things that like benefit us that type of way and just kind of bring us into a feeling of connectedness with all other things, like are the things that serve God. Um, and so it makes sense to me to burn, to burn any sort of herb. Um, even the same thing, like I like the smell of marijuana. I haven't smoked pot in three months, maybe more. Um, but the smell of it still is quite pleasing to me. Um, the smell of burning wood in general, burning leaves, um, those types of things. And they all serve a specific purpose because I also remember being in California and seeing the forest fires and um, there were parts that smelt good and cleansing. And I didn't really understand why. I kind of felt bad about it until it was explained to me that like the redwoods, the redwood saplings grow in carbon. 
they wouldn't be able to grow if it weren't for the forest fires. So like, it's natural for there to be forest fires in that area. That's why the redwoods grow there. And if there isn't forest fires for a long enough time, the redwoods won't grow. So, you know, it actually creates um, life, that, that form of destruction, um, which is awesome. But then at the same time, uh, there were parts that like, had been overdone because of the way, and it maybe it was like the mix of chemicals that we as people had used to try to stop the fires and different stuff like that. But like, I don't know. I think everything that's natural is very good that way. Like, like it's storming last night and it flash flooded. And that's the cool thing about Texas. Cause like, that's normally how it goes is that when it rains, it pours, like I said, it like, it, it flash floods all the time and I love it. I think it's so, it's just powerful and it's very cool. And it like does give this feeling of like being in the desert where like, it's so hot. The sun is so there all the time down here. And then like, you know, all of a sudden the sky will just open up and just pour itself out. And like, it's so cleansing. But, like thunderstorms, hurricanes, tsunamis, like as destructive as they are, they're, they're actually forms of replenishment. And like, if it weren't for, you know, hundreds of millions of people dying in these tsunamis and stuff like that. Like if we could look at it from a distance and see how it's like cleansing the earth, like it would actually seem like a far better thing. We just tend to get really stuck in our own heads about stuff. And like, I've said that for an extremely long time. It came from, well, it started because I used to be so extremely self-deprecating and um, self-destructive. I didn't care about myself and I wanted to die, to be honest. Um, for a very long time I had a death wish and I was like fucking wild about it um but I learned through that process and through the healing of that process that like the thing that was keeping me so depressed about it was because I thought I mattered so much and that those feelings were bad to have those natural feelings were bad to have because like I matter and once I stopped caring about myself like that I started caring for myself just genuinely as I am um I take far better care of myself now than I ever have at the same time, like, I don't think about myself the same way I always did. I don't, I'm not constantly focused on, you know, my humanity. And, like, if something were to happen to me and I were just to up and go be gone, if somebody were to, I mean, I've had plenty of people try to kill me. Um, so, like, if any of them would have succeeded or, like, if I were to, you know, if whatever were to happen naturally, whatever it is, if I were to die, if I were not to exist any longer, like that's just as good as my existence. It's part of it. Like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's an innately bad thing. I really don't. I think that everything serves a purpose and a time and happens for a reason that way. And the grander scheme of things, I don't believe in, you know, a divine hand of God, like a person or a man specifically, like deciding this is this and this is this. And the reason I'm killing this person is so that I can bring them to like, I don't think it works exactly like that. I think it does, depending on what your willingness is to receive those things. But, like, that's what I think it ultimately revolves around is just your perception of things. Um, and, you know, like, I'm not any better or worse than anyone else in the grandest scheme of things either. My life isn't more important than, like, who am I to say that my life is more important than the fly I'm trying to kill flying around my room every once in a while, right? Like... That fly is also a, an, a being and in the life force, and um, it's just doing what it can to survive, just like all of us are. And like, it, I don't, I don't know the flies. Like, may, maybe that flies out there, like actually trying to be like a good person. Maybe that flies trying to teach the other flies, like, you know, we don't just only eat shit that's like outside of people's houses. Like, I don't know, but like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't. We really don't know. And, like, I've made a point since I was a kid. Because when I was really little, my brothers, my dad taught us to kill kill bugs and kill little things um, for fun. Because that's something he did. He used to, like, put firecrackers and frogs and stuff like that. And he thought it was fun. So he used to teach us, like, how to do ant killing rivers and how to force feed frogs. And we'd, like, torture flies and stuff. And I remember by the time I was, like, five or six feeling deeply guilty about those things. Because I was like, these are... These are our brothers. These are our friends. These are our family. Like, why Why are we doing this to them? They don't deserve it. Like, you know, every once in a while I still kill a bug. 
you know, depending on the bug, like, especially like mosquitoes, mosquitoes, I did, but that's because they're preying on me. If you prey on me, now you're my prey, right? Like, don't fuck with something this much bigger than you and expect like whatever. But at the same time, like, I'm also more understanding where like, I don't just go killing mosquitoes. Male mosquitoes are pollinators. They are actually very good for the environment. And mosquitoes have a lot of nutrients that like bats and certain birds need to survive and thrive. And those animals are helping our environment even more and our pollination even more. And like, everything serves a purpose, right? So like, I try not to just demonize things. I do have a hard time with flies. I do want to kill them when they are just like, especially because like they all come into a house where it's like you have the entire fucking outside to be in and you got 24 hours to live. Why are you in here? And then you like open a door for them and they'll be like not able to figure out how to get out the door while like five other flies come in. It's all very frustrating and I know y'all know what I'm talking about, but at the same time, like that's, them <laughs> that's not that that's how they are like they don't deserve to die for that and i know that like you know for a while like i have a bit of arachnophobia things with really long multiple legs give me the creeps but like just because it gives me the creeps doesn't mean it deserves to die that's crazy and when we validate those things to ourselves like i don't think it's ultimately healthy at all i think it's very important that we are aware of ourselves and that we're aware of like what it is that we're doing in the world and like when I walk I look on the I keep my head like I look on the ground one I don't like people trying to interact with me and when I walk with my head up and when I'm like looking at people people want to smile at me people want to engage with me it gets annoying I used to do that all the time and I don't like it also I realized that like there were so many times where like I'm just la di da di da enjoying nature meanwhile i'm like trampling over ants and different bugs and stuff like that like plants and stuff so i think it's like i like to walk with my head kind of down i look around i i'm always very aware of my surroundings and i also very much appreciate my surroundings i like looking at things um but i also like make a point to just pay attention to where i'm walking you know as much as possible so that i'm if there is an ant and I can easily just step over it, why wouldn't I? That's a life. That's a life. And also, like, ants, like, the way that they work is, like, he's probably leading a trail or following a trail. And, like, if you kill him, like, you'll throw off the scent so then, like, it'll confuse the other ants and then they won't be able to find their way home. Like, you affect so many things so much more than you realize with just such simple acts. And, like, as humans, like, we have the capacity to consider our responsibility in these things we have an awareness of our effect on reality. So, like, that is our responsibility. I get why people want to just stay dumb. I get why people don't want to be sober. I get why it's easier to just do the dumb thing because then you don't have to be responsible, right? But, like, I'm pretty sure that at the end of our lives, we're still going to be held responsible for those things because our DNA is directly tied into all of nature and all of the universe and when we die if we haven't taken proper responsibility for those things then our dna is going to break down into a whole bunch of carbon and chaos like if you actually want to live forever the only way that can happen matter doesn't isn't created or destroyed but it does degrade and so like why would you purposefully degrade yourself in this life when like you could put good things into yourself so that when you die, then you're putting good things back out into the world. And like, that's how you make the world a better place. And I just don't know why you wouldn't when it's so simple. It's so simple. Like it actually, like as lazy as we think that, you know, as, as easy as we think it is to be lazy, it actually ends up like doing us so much more damage. You know, like back when I was like far more, I'm not terribly lazy any longer. Um, I'm really not. Uh, really given to it the same sort of way that I used to be but I used to be incredibly fucking lazy I didn't want to think for myself I didn't want to clean myself I didn't want to clean anything around me I would just sit and eat and eat and eat and I was miserable I hated myself I hated that doing the work felt so like over encumbering and it doesn't feel that way anymore because I'm doing it all the time. I wake up doing it. I'm doing it in my sleep. Like, it makes me feel good. It makes me that this is what it's for. I'm not here that long. Like, even if I were here for 250 fucking years, that's not that long. It really isn't. It goes by extremely quick. Um, and so, you know, that's one thing I do know. And like, why not just make the most of it? 
why not just make the most of it? Um, okay, so yeah, the Knight of Swords just came in the reverse. If that means anything to anybody, I'm not going to read it because I'm actually going to read something else. Okay. That was a really weird tangent to go off on, but I felt like it was important, especially because I think that a lot of people don't know me. They don't know who I am. They don't know what I'm about. They don't understand. They don't know where these things are coming from. Uh, they're coming from everywhere and everything all the time. I have as this person only existed 34 years, almost 35 years, but, uh, myself, you know, like, like the, the true power within me that I'm, I'm pulling from has existed forever and will exist for as long as everything else does. Um, and I think that that's true of everyone. I think that it is true of everyone. What I see in others is the same power I see in myself. It's just a matter of, are you actively cultivating it? Are you defiantly working against it? Because at that point, then we're at enmity with each other. Like, we're not we're not going to be able to bond. And it's so crazy to me how many people will try to bond with me that are at, in active defiance against their own truest selves. Like, I don't think it's cute. I don't think it's cool. I actually don't like it. To me, you're just trying to give me more work. And, like... I, I, I'm done doing the work for other people. I'm done doing the work for other people. All I have to do is do my work and it will speak for itself. And those that can use that to help themselves will be able to. But like, if I'm, you know, being the sharpest tool in the shed isn't going to look like sharpening everybody else. That will just make me dull. I myself need to be sharpened and then I can be used properly for what I'm supposed to be used for which isn't to save a whole bunch of other people that don't even want to be saved. If you really wanted to be saved, you would do the work. Okay. So like, you're not going to sit here and guilt me into doing the work for you anymore. Cause that's something people really love to do too. And they don't even realize that they're doing it half the time. But like that emotional manipulation, I'm so keen to it at this point that like, I don't care who you are. I'm sorry if you don't want to hear it, but like, no, that's for you and you can take it. Does it not feel good? You don't like how that feels. That's the energy you're trying to give to me to work with. And you're only giving it to me because you recognize that I know how to work with it. But the only reason I know how to work with it is because I've already done the work. You do the work. You figure it out. That's it. That's the only way that we are ever going to be able to connect. Otherwise, I'm always going to be lording over you as master. That's not what I'm here for. I'm an eternal sage. That's what makes me the master of my own craft. But I, I'm not the master of your craft. You are. Hopefully. Hopefully <laughs> that's what you're working on. That's what I want for people. So like, this is an example of my craft, right? This is a very physical example of my craft. What I would like to do, it, I'd considered it in the last job that I was doing as a caregiver was videotaping my interactions with my client. And, you know, um, maybe that's something that I'll do in the future. Um, I would like to just, in general, start videotaping things, not to gain some sort of attention for it, but so as an educational thing, so that people can see what it's like when I'm in action, uh, engaging with certain energies a certain ways, the ways that I build on relationships, the ways that I handle myself in certain situations, like, is a skill and a craft, and uh, a lot of people come to me are attracted to me because they they see that and they want to know it and they want to understand it and they think that emulating me is going to bring them into it and I that's just not the way it works like don't know me know yourself that's but you can watch me and hopefully it can help you know yourself hopefully it can help you come to yourself better that way I don't want somebody to watch me do this and then be like okay so now I'm gonna go get tarot cards and now I'm gonna sit and do it myself it took me a long time. It took me years of watching general tarot readings randomly and like, tr and like going through the whole process of like, does this even make sense? This is crazy. Like what's even the point of this? To then being like, oh, I can actually pull from anything, right? Like this is just people talking. I, it's just the same thing as a podcast. Like, and then being able to come to my own and be like, oh, well, if somebody else can do it, then I can do it myself. You know, it wasn't just like, 
I want to be like that person. They they were able to come to a conclusion that I've been struggling to come to by using this tool. So now I'm going to go pick up that tool and try to use it. These things take skill. They're a craft. Like you can't, it's like, you know, arts and crafts. That's what I do. Like you can't just um, pick up a pair of scissors, pick up some glue, start cutting paper up, start gluing it onto a piece of paper and then expect it to look like Picasso. You know, it takes tuning in it takes a fine attunement to self and to the you know creator source you know we are creators and those things are always innate in us and you there isn't anything you can't do and you know i i personally believe that anybody anybody could do anything anybody could do any, anything that i do anybody could do for sure because i'm not so special um i'm really not I'm really not. In fact, everybody I've ever met has some quality that I have had, <laughs> if, if anything, had to spend a lot of time trying to figure out in myself. Um, and it just comes naturally to them. You know, uh, I feel like I kind of got the short end of the stick that way, but maybe that's just my perception. I think everybody kind of views themselves that way. Um, and I think that's important to consider as well. So anyways, let's just to, uh, just I like these general collective readings unless I have something specifically on my heart. Oh yeah, that dream that I had. I've not been doing this tarot reading yet, but like that dream that I had in it, this girl. So it's like she was at this one specific farm. I had happened to meet her at this other farm, um, and she was she had a girlfriend with her, um, but she also had her boyfriend who like you know is a long term partner. Um, who like they've had, you know, they've had their their whole story, um, breakups and get getting back together and all these different types of things. And um, he's come around a lot to working on his own healing, where that was something he was kind of always against for a long time. Um, but now she like was with this girl who was like n not the best influence. Um, but the way that this girl is, I mean, she's a hippie, like true to heart, like. When she feels she has to do something, she's got to do it. So, like, if she's got to go buck wild for a while, that's on her. And that's that. And, like, she'll she'll take those licks. And, like, I have all the respect for it in that regard. But at the same time, like, just like any person, like, I'm weary of, like, people engaging in certain behaviors and stuff. And I don't know. It, there was a lot of weird emotions in this one because this girl had pretty much... I met them at this random farm. Where, they're, where, where we were all going to be working and living and staying for a, a bit. Um, and, like, her boyfriend's all, like, you know, different now because he's, like, more spiritual now. And she's kind of, like, frustrated with it. Now she's trying... Now she's kind of being in the rebellious, like, and because they play off of each other, you know? They're twin flames. So, like, she... When he's one way, she tends to be the other way. Um, they do this little dance. And so, like... It all seems totally like everybody's kind of like whatever about it because it seems understandable and normal and natural. But then she decides to steal this farmer's like this farmer has like this weird giant van. It's like one of those um, it's one of those storage trucks. Um, I don't know what you call them. I drove one for when I was doing landscaping here in Texas. Um, so it's like one of those big trucks where like it just has the front seat in the front and then it just has a very wide, big open back, like a U-Haul type truck, right? Um, whatever those types of trucks are called um, so that you can put a bunch of stuff in the back. So it's like that, only it's like very, very large and it's covered in an inflatable balloon. Like the entire van inflates, the entire butt truck inflates. Um, and it's blue and purple and it just has like this big inflatable thing around it. And like, it was for the circus or something. I don't know. They'd had it for a really long time and it's like a collector's thing. I don't know. All of a sudden, this girl and her girlfriend decide to steal it and they just take off. And, you know, they're having their own fun little adventure time, whatever. But like, everybody's kind of upset about it because they're like, one, you can't just rob the people that we're staying with into like where the fuck are you going and she left her boyfriend so he was all feeling some type of way and I'm all feeling some type of way for him because I'm like oh geez and when they leave like they like didn't know how to drive it properly so they like inflate the thing and then like it gets caught in a bunch of trees and it like pops and so now there's just like 
this rubber like hanging off of the truck and stuff like that. So they've already, they're like damaging it, right? They're like being irresponsible. And then they like pull out and end up like, as they're like pulling out and trying to figure out how to work the truck, they like cause this accident and they just keep going and they like go to another state or whatever. Nobody hears from them. They just go. Um, but we were still right there and we heard that like that accident, like a little girl ended up dying in that accident, in that car accident. And so then we're like, well, fuck, like they're not going to be coming back because now they're running from the law uh, for vehicular manslaughter. Like they killed a person. Um, so it's really fucked up. And like, it's, you know, her boyfriend's there, like just being weird because he doesn't know what to do with himself. Um, it was so weird. Well, then they end up coming back with the, with the truck. They come back, but it's like in the middle of the night and they're like, okay, we're going to have to get our stuff. We're sorry that we left like that, but we're get, we're going to be leaving again. Obviously we can't stay. Um, and I like try to bring up that she had killed a person and she's like kind of nonchalant about it. I just remember being like, damn, like she's really on this one, huh? And at that point, like I realized that like, you know, we've kind of spiritually kind of like separated ways for a time again. So like I didn't, I had been there because she was there. But like I wasn't, I didn't belong there. And then like, I didn't feel like, I felt like with her being off on her own thing, like I couldn't stay there. I didn't have any spiritual protection there any longer. All of a sudden like the farmer was trying to get me too. I don't know. It was weird. So like, then I just remember like suddenly like now I'm like running away from these people. Um, and I'm like having to hide through all these other barns, like these, the neighboring farms. Um, and there's like pigs that I have to go through. And then there's like this, like, I'm like hiding from these kids, the neighbor's kids that are out in the field. And they have like a big play slide swing thing, you know, and, um, but it's like covered in hay and stuff like that. And I'm like, I like sneak up into it but then they're like they like know that I'm around there so they're like looking for me and end up going down the slide and then like going over to the next neighbors who like is kind of unaware that any of this is happening and they're out in their gardens and they happen to see me and I was like oh hey I am just rolling through uh, I'm just you know like a vagrant essentially and I'm looking for work and they were like oh absolutely yeah you can work for us because they don't know what's going on so then I like and that's my cover is to be able to work for them um and that was about it. But like, it was just, there was so much else that was going on and it was just very, very strange. Very strange. Um, I don't know where that dream came from. I don't know where that dream came from. And it's funny because anytime I have super vivid dreams, which is often, if not every night, um, I want to share them. I have a dream journal. It gets difficult to sit there and actually write these things down because they're so there's so much to them. And as soon as I start writing all of a sudden, I'm like giving every little detail and stuff like that. And like, I used to talk to my brother about my dreams and he used to sit there and listen for hours. Me just talking. And he's like, I can't even believe that like you're dreaming like this. But like, then he got, he was like, I mean, obviously you are cause you just keep doing it. <laughs> and then at one point he was like, you know what? Here's a dream journal. I think he gave it to me for my birthday. It like colored on and stuff, made it real nice. And he was like, now you don't got to share them with me anymore. You have somewhere to put them, which was so funny because like, it was kind of like he had just gotten overwhelmed hearing my dreams, but it's actually extremely beneficial too, because what I found was like, I like that dream journal was wild and I wish I had never lost it. Um, there was like, I started having these dreams where like multiple different dreams kind of built like this whole city, um, in the woods. There was multiple different places actually, but I was like building all, like it wasn't that I was building them, but like in my dream, they like came to life, like these different whole ass areas with different buildings that like in different dreams I would be inside of and stuff like that. So like I had, I had like a couple full ass cities that like were developed in my dreams. Um, and like, I remember like this, like specifically, like there'd be weird ones where they like lined up with each other later on and it was real bizarre. Um, the one in specific that I always remember is that in July, and this was probably like, what, 20, 2009 or so, I think around like 2009 or so, 2008, 
2008, something like that, in July, I had a dream. Well, let me think of how it worked. I had this dream where I was like in this cabin in in like in the woods or whatever. I was in like one of these specific cabins. Um, I was like going around the area that I already knew and then found like came upon a cabin that like I hadn't been inside of necessarily. They were like ones that people lived in. And this Mexican woman came out um, screaming in Spanish and she was asking, she was crying for help. Um, and I didn't know Spanish, but I could tell that she needed help. So I went in to her and into her house and was like, what can I, you know, what do you need? What's going on? And she explained to me and like, I somehow understood in the broken Spanish, um, or in my, my broken Spanish that, uh, her children, she had, she had, um, a daughter that was about eight and a son that was about, no, at the time the daughter was probably like five and the son was probably like two. Um, and that there had been like this weird dark entity in the house and that it had essentially taken her son. Um, and she didn't know who to contact or what to do in order to get him back. She knew that this dark entity had taken her son, but the police wouldn't believe her, you know, and she didn't know what to do. And I was like, I can help you. I can help you. I, I, I know this entity. Um, I'll get him back. And, um, That was it. I remember like almost like, like I just remember like her screaming and like me like get it so that I was about to, you know, do this spiritual work. Um, and that was it. And it was so bizarre and so strange and so like misfitting and everything in my, that time of my life. Um, except that I did know the dark entity because I was extremely depressed around those times. So like I, it was just weird and it kind of felt like a nightmare almost. Um, and I didn't really think anything more of it, but I wrote it down. Well, then in August of that year, like late August, that was like the beginning of July. And then in late August, I had another dream. And in this dream, like there was other stuff happening. And I happened to be like moving through like, you know, like there was like this big mall. And I was like going through this mall. Um, but then at one point, like it changed into where like there was this like this little old schoolhouse. And I went into the schoolhouse and I remember like going, like kind of exploring it. And it almost reminded me of this school I went to in fifth and sixth grade. Um, this tiny little Christian school where like, it just had like a couple like back staircases, stairways that were like weird. And I went up one of these staircases and it went up into another class. And like, I'm just sitting here exploring this school. Like it seemed abandoned, but there was actually a class going on and um, they were young kids, like five to seven, um, seemingly like, so, no, I guess like seven, eight, nine, um, like first graders, right? First, second graders, something like that. And so I like walk up in on this class and then I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And one of the girls, like, she's like, you, she's like, I know you. And I thought it was so weird because I was like, why would I know a random little kid in this random little thing? And then when I looked at her, I was like, oh my goodness. I do remember you. And then in my dream, I flashed back. It was so bizarre, but I flashed back to it. The flashback was like it, it took up where that dream back in July had left off. And, um, or maybe this even happened the other way. Like maybe I had this dream in July and had the other dream in August. Either way, it was super weird with the timing, but it took off right where the other one had left off. Um, and I like, was going into, I was like in the house, but it was like in the movie Poltergeist where I was like going into this like void. I had created a portal in this home in order to go into it, in order to get this boy and get him out. And like in the dream, like I go through this portal or whatever and I get the boy out and like, it all happens really quick. I kind of remember like the dark entity, like being like near me. And I remember like there being like a loud growling sound kind of, but then I just remember like giving the boy to his mother and like her being like completely and like, again, she couldn't even speak English. So she was like trying to thank me so much, but like was just overcome with emotions. And she's just saying all these different things in Spanish and I didn't fully understand, but I'm like got tears in my eyes and stuff too. And I'm like, I'm just happy to help. Like, I'm glad that I was here. I'm glad that you knew to ask me. I'm glad that the universe put me here when it put me here. Um, 
so strange. So like my dream journal was great. And that was what I was hoping with this other one. This one's become something totally different where it's like not just dreams. It's like just a bit of everything. Um, like just opinions on what's going on, different stuff like that. I wrote a poem in it. There hasn't been much because every time I try to write in it, it gets real weird. Like my arm will start getting like tingly and like it'll be like hard to write. Um, and it's like hard to focus. So I probably need to bless that journal and kind of work that out because yeah it's been kind of weird my dreams have always been real weird and I used to have really like quote-unquote prophetic seeming dreams about you know crazy things happening in the world and I wish I still had that dream journal I bet I bet my parents know where it's at um they have a whole bunch of my old stuff that you know they have they have everything in mind they have everything in mind I'm not even doing this right now, right? I'm just using this. It's fine because obviously this is what I need to talk about right now. But that just reminded me of how interesting it was to me when I went. My parents' house is actually my house. It's actually the house that my grandma left for me and um, in my brother's name. In mine and my brother's names. Um, my parents just like shoehorned their way into. Um, it's... Uh, the house that my grandma was always in while I was growing up. And um, when I went, I went there after I found out about the way that the inheritance was going, I wanted to go find out more, which I didn't because of all the weird darkness that was there. Um, I felt completely overwhelmed. I started having sleep paralysis, which is not a normal thing for me. And in the sleep paralysis, like, I'm extremely lucid to it. So, like, I would, like, focus um, on the sleep paralysis demon. And it was my fucking mom um, as a hag giving me the evil eye and shit, trying to choke me out to, so that I couldn't talk, trying to keep me from being able to move. Um, and I was just fighting her constantly, and it was really obnoxious. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it was. she was trying to get me out of the house, and I did leave. But at the same time, she was trying to keep me there. She really just wanted me to kill myself. Um, ultimately, that's kind of always how it's been. Every time I've ever lived in the, under the same roof as my mom, uh, there's a very intense vibe that I'm supposed to be killing myself. Um, which is annoying. <laughs> Especially because, like, the further I've gotten away from those things, and the more that I'm just, like, by myself, enjoying myself and stuff, like... I don't ever feel that way ever, ever. I feel exactly the opposite. Like I want to survive. I want to live. I want to like explore and enjoy things. Like it's the exact opposite energy whenever I'm around my mom. And specifically when I'm like in a space that she lives in um, or has like her own little space in. So that's the thing, but I thought it was interesting. Like this, what the only reason I'm bringing all this up is because when I was there, she started like hanging up all of these old paintings of mine and like stuff that I had made for my grandma and stuff that I had made for her. And like all of a sudden now, since I'm staying there, like the house is completely decorated and then all of this old art of mine that she had had in box. And she's like, oh, I was just going through this stuff and didn't realize that we still had these things. So she's just like hanging it up. Which is such bullshit. And when I realized, like, she's just trying to make it, like, while I was there, me feel like I was a part of things. Because she didn't want me to notice that she had no photos of me. The only family photos were photos that have been taken since I've been estranged from the family. And she was essentially living like I didn't exist. She had put boxed all of my things away and put it somewhere where people couldn't see it. And the only reason that she was bringing those things out is because I was there. And because she wanted me to feel like that it wasn't the case that she was living like I didn't fucking exist. So I just found that interesting. I don't know. I don't know where half of this shit is coming from right now, to be honest. Um, I did want to talk about, that's too many cards. I did want to talk about um, just like an overview of like, this isn't, the my spiritual practice is not something like it's, it's always changing. It's not something that like, I haven't sat there and read books and to learn things, I've just learned through experience. I haven't gone to any sort of weird mystery schools aside from 
<laughs> once it have existed in my own life. Um, I don't, I don't like never, I've never read anything. These aren't, it isn't coming from like me researching stuff on the internet and stuff even as much as it's just, I find something like resonating with me and then I just engage with it more and more. Um, I find people that, that engage with it. I listen to people, watch people, and then I just do what resonates with me. Um, and then I'll learn about things later on and be like, oh, well, like with candles, like candles were something where like, I loved, I learned from my brother, actually. My brother always had candles. He loved lighting candles. He always has candles. And, um, it was something where I learned that too, where I was like, man, yeah, when I light a candle, it definitely makes me feel some type of way and it definitely sets a mood. And I love that. So I started just naturally like resonating towards certain candles, certain colors, certain scents, and for certain moods and to set certain moods. And I started like collecting different candles in order to set certain moods. And then I learned that that was a form of witchcraft. And I'm like, okay. The only reason I learned it was a form of witchcraft is because I lived with this girl who loved to think herself a witch and took me to a witch store and like, you know, they had all these, they had these candles and they were different colors. And I was like, oh, well, this is nice. Cause I know what to do with these. Like this comes naturally to me. I already have these concepts built in me. Um, but she like, I, I think witches are stupid. I think if you think that you're a witch, you're an idiot, especially nowadays. Cause like you can be a spiritualist and you can be given to certain things, but like these people that like learn their witchcraft from like YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and like, are, you know, they're just like forever on the internet or like, I don't know, these like fake gay people that like think that they're witches because they like crystals. Like, I don't know. These things to me mean something because of the naturalism behind them. Um, crystals I learned about because I just happened to work at a hippie shop when I was 19. Out of all the stores that hit me back, I went to, to a large mall near our house. Well, it wasn't very near our house, but it was the closest mall and applied at every fucking place there. And the one place that hit me back was the hippie shop. And I was like, well, cool. That'd be, that'd be a fun one to work at anyways. Right. I thought it was neat. My parents didn't like it. They thought it was all demonic. They didn't want me working there, but I thought it would be cool. So I start working there. Well, they had, we, we are selling crystals, healing crystals. Right. And I have all these like psychics coming in and talking to me and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is all a bunch of bullshit. I did not believe any of it back then, but I learned about those things then. And then later on in my life, it started to resonate with me in a different way. So that's kind of how everything's worked, right? Like, it's not like I'm just like delving into these things, like trying to feel some way, opening myself to all these things. Like, no, I'm just being me. I'm just living my life, trying to do these things. And like these types of things have come over time and over an awareness of self and just learning what works for me and what doesn't. So that's that's the most I can recommend for those things. I just, people get some wild, like I have so many people that think that I'm a Satanist or that I practice witchcraft and that blows my mind because like I'm constantly telling people how stupid I think that shit is. But those marks are on me because I dated a Satanic priest like a dumbass. I didn't, I didn't realize that those things, like, people took those things seriously. I thought he was just kind of an edgelord. Um, I didn't realize that he, like, I thought he was just being edgy. I thought that it was just, like, a punk rock thing. Like, and that's the way that he kind of even described it. was like, you know, like, well, it's not, like, a real theology. But at the same time, there was a deep theology that he was teaching me about it. Um, and, yeah, and, like, I carried him fucking with me for a long time unintentionally you know I've since broke those bonds but like that was a thing for a time so like I I get why people that's where a lot of my knowledge and stuff has come from too about certain things so like you know I I but like generally when people judge me as those things like it's because they're uneducated and like if you literally think I'm a witch because I burn sage or because I like do oracle off of tarot or like because of like I interpret my dreams or like whatever whatever shit I pray to my ancestors whatever shit it is that you deem as witchcraft that I do like that's generally coming from a colonial concept of what witchcraft is like 
you're doing exactly what the white people did to my native ancestors when they were like, oh, you worship the earth? You believe that trees have spirits? That's demonic. Like, just want to point that out. Just want to point that out because it's not, that's not innately how things are. Paganism has been like a thing long before Christianity was ever a thing. Um, all of these concepts existed long before. And like, that's the whole thing. Christianity puts itself up like, right, because the world was lost and it was all full of darkness and everything was so terrible and everything was super demonic. And that's why we needed Christ. And then Christ came in and everything changed. But it's like, that's not really the history of how things actually worked. So much of Christianity has been taken directly from paganism and then turned into a brainwashing tactic and then was literally crusaded throughout the world through violence and domineering tactics. So like not really the lighthearted light and love thing that it's portrayed to be, um, you know, it's really just a, a, the same thing that the English are known for doing is robbing people of their culture robbing cultures of their, you know, assets, and then misusing them. Like, the English went through all of these different countries and stole all the different, you know, killed people over spices and herbs in order to, like, steal these people's things and then don't know how to fucking cook. Like, it's a common joke, but, like, it's true. The, the, it's, it's just as true with that as, as it is with Christianity. So, don't give me none of that shit. I don't want to hear it. I grew up Christian. I grew up more Christian than even my family members. I dedicated my life to the Lord and into, into missions. My family made jokes the entire time I was growing up about the pastor and about the church and about the people in the church. And that's all they still do. They smoke pot nonstop. They get high before church. Then they go and they get information that they can bring back to gossip about information that they can bring back to stroke their own egos about about how they're so much smarter and better than these people in the church that's it they don't actively engage in any of those actual belief systems they're dark witches they're a bunch of fucking morons they're a bunch of people that they're hypocrites and they're they like to give in to evil things evil being like gossiping about people and slandering people and trying to kill people. I'm just so tired of the bullshit. I'm so tired of it. It's like, teach their own. Again, like always, just take whatever resonates. Leave the rest, whatever. Do you need to say something to me? Say it to my face. Uh, you probably won't be able to say it to my face because I stay isolated, but like, say it here. Say it out in the open. You don't need to be weirdly shady about fucking everything if you were really so genuine and so powerful. You wouldn't have to be manipulative. You wouldn't have to use these backhanded tactics. You wouldn't have to be nice to somebody's face and then be a shitbag behind their back. That's not power. It's fucking dumb is what it is. So sick of it. These dumbass witches where they're like... I'm going to go curse somebody. I'm going to go kill a bird so I can curse somebody. Like, you're fucking retarded. Sorry if the R word offends you. I've already explained that in another video, too. But that's exactly what these people are. All right. All this negative energy. Return to sender. I already know where it's coming from. You're not welcome here. Leave me alone. I don't want it. I'm not taking it. It's yours. You can keep it. Do what you want with it. Not really my concern. Okay, let's get a message. Let's have let's have something to talk about. Give me something to talk about. That isn't this nonsensical negativity stuff. I don't I don't want to deal with it anymore. Thank you. Please clear this space of it. Please block those energies, any of those energies trying to come into this space right now and interfere with my anything, uh, just, just send them away, send them back to themselves, make them, you know, have to look at themselves. Turn that mirror right back on them, please. Thank you. Um, I already got a couple cards that came out. I just want a couple more. Okay. Anything else? Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, jeez. This is quite a lot. Okay. These are the first ones that came out, so we're going to put these 
here. I guess, I guess I'll leave things where they fall. Sure. Okay. You can't really see what's going on here. Um, okay, so we've got these and we've got these. Okay, so the first ones that initially fell out are the Five of Cups, but in the reverse, which is great. Um, it looks so ominous. The Five of Cups is, so as you can see, he's looking at the cups that have been knocked over. There's two cups standing behind him, but he's looking at the ones that have been knocked over. These ones were filled with, uh, it looks like two of them were filled with blood and one of them was filled with something green, some type of oil. Um, my matcha tea. Um, that is the last of it, and I am kind of sad now that you mention it, but the whole point of the, the Five of Cups is that you're kind of focusing on the negatives um, when there's two cups standing behind you that you can still work with, um, and you got to work with what you got. In the reverse, next to the Knight of Wands, now the Knight of Wands looks nice he's got i don't know if you've seen my other my other uh my other video but he's got a his it's not a robe but his his clothing has the uh lizard ouroboros on it however none of these lizards are actually eating their own tail um they're just kind of in a circle which is cool so it doesn't denote the same sort of thing. Um, the lizard, right? The lizard denoting like the Knight of Wands is like a forward movement of energy. Forward, like a proud, like I'm going in there with what I got. Um, the lizards. I don't know, they just feel kind of funky to me. Like, in a good way. The Five of Cups looks so ominous, even in the reverse. But in the reverse, I feel like it actually has a far more positive feeling. Or they take that like, yeah, there could be things to look at the feel away, but we're, we're not, we're going forward and we're not looking at those things that way. We're actually looking at the positives, focusing on the positives. Then we have, okay, so the way that these came out was weird. They all kind of fell out randomly. I have three that came out together this way and they did all come face up. Um, these two came face up at the very end. These two came out separate, face down. There's two up here. Um, okay, so this one is the clarifier for this one. This one is the clarifier for this one. Um, the Empress is the clarifier for the Five of Cups in reverse and the Knight of Wands. Um, which to me is, yeah, just saying like, like you're doing the right thing when you don't focus on the negatives, when you move into like the things that you do have to work with, um, then you're moving, you're moving into the Empress energy. The Knight of Wands is directly moving to, like straight towards the Empress. Um, There's also like a bit of a transition in the backgrounds where the Five of Cups um, is in, not necessarily, well, it's a bit of desert, but it's like moving into the desert where like he's actually right before a river um, and there's a town in the distance with some green. Um, but then the Knight of Wands is in the desert um, where the Empress is in a very lush area. Uh, looks like there's like some type of like wheat grass type deal. Um, there's a river. Her crown is covered in stars. The Empress is a very good symbol uh, of 
not, it's not necessarily of completion where the emperor does kind of have a, a feeling of, of completion. The empress has a feeling of consistent confidence and, um, like standard and, um, uh, like uprightness or like growth, like the empress Every day, the Empress steps into the Empress energy. Um, you know, and plus she's like right below the Emperor technically in the tarot. Um, so it is kind of like this. When even like I'm, I'm noticing that like on the seat she sits, it's not really a throne. It's actually a whole bunch of pillows. She's sitting quite comfortably, but there's a stone that has the female symbol on it um, and the circle is filled with green, which is the sign of abundance, you know, and uh, yeah, abundance and comfort. Yeah, moving away from the five, moving away from the five of cups, like that's kind of it being in the reverse is because we're moving away from that and we're moving into the Knight of Wands. Now, If it were in the upright, if it were in the upright, it would almost feel to me that like it would be using using the things that you have lost um and the things that have that you've mourned in order to move into the position of the empress but in the reverse it's almost like no we're really focusing on those two cups um like we're we're completely moved away from you know the black cloak looking down feeling some type of way um and moving into something much brighter and uh, much more comfortable. Just to be clear, I'm quite comfortable in black. I enjoy it, but I'm also comfortable in different colors. Uh, depends on how fat I am or not, really. So I'm working on that. Um, okay, so that's an interesting one. These, and what's weird is because these almost feel like completely separate reads. This feels separate from this. This feels separate from this. These feel separate. But these two feel like they're actually going to end up bringing it all together. So that was that read. I'm going to do this read, and then I'm going to bring them together with these two. Um, so these, when they came out, it's the King of Wands again, which was in my last one, only he's in the upright. The Ace of Pentacles in the reverse. And the Lovers in the upright. The Ace of Pentacles is the reverse. How it's resonating with me right now is that The Ace of Pentacles being in the reverse is a strange one, but it, it um, because the other two cards are so pleasant, it kind of, instead of giving a, often to me in the reverse, that would feel like um, a loss of finances or a loss of one's power or control over um, material wealth somehow. Um, but in this spread, it seems like Like you have the pentacle and it is the ace, but you're, you're kind of removing it, hiding it, or like pushing it down. Like that's not the focus in order. That's not the focus in order to have the king of wands and the lovers. 
the fact that I'm questioning that makes me feel like it's not in order to have. And as I was saying that, I'm like, wait, is that maybe not the right thing to be doing? Let me see the clarifier. I got this clarifier for this, which is the Knight of Pentacles. Okay. In the upright. She'll show you. I know it doesn't really focus well. Um, okay. So the concept of material wealth like the, the supreme material wealth being the sustainer, being the stabilizer, being the supporter um, is suppressed. We're, we're pushing that down. The Knight of Pentacles is that we're making active choices with our material uh, abundance that will sustain us. And we're moving, well, we're not moving, we're standing. But we're making, it's, it's like breaking it down. You know, it's not looking for like hitting the lottery and having that solve all of your problems. It's taking those small steps and moving just in a better direction in order to see the fulfillment that we seek. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know why these are all seeming so um, disjointed. They're just not resonating like is. I do notice that behind the Knight of Pentacles is like what almost looks to be like a river of blood. Um, that well, when I hold it like this too, that's like pouring down from the hills. doesn't look happy. He doesn't look happy. The king looks displeased. And the Adam and Eve and the lovers, um, the Eve looks, well, she's looking up at the angel. Um, Almost with just a sense of awe. She's kind of displaced from herself. She just, she seems in awe. Where, it's almost funny to me because like, yeah, she almost seems like in awe of the angel. Where Adam is looking at her and he also looks displeased. And he looks like he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see that in this. No, probably not. Their faces. Um... Just like in, in their body, their body stances that way. Um, okay, so Adam actually looks much like the Knight of Wands. And Eve looks like the Empress. And like I said, like, so Eve, like, because she's, 
because she's in this open receiving, like that is like the Empress energy. And Adam is like in the Knight of Wands energy in this card. Um, and even like her having the lush tree behind her, even though there's the snake behind her, which is not in the card. It's not in the card as the Empress, but she's obviously moved up from where she's at with the Empress too. The snake, the reptile, he's actually in the King of Wands, but he kind of looks like the Knight of Wands as well. The Knight of Pentacles. The way I have this set up, like it almost looks like the Knight of Pentacles is trying to present monetary wealth, material wealth, some sort of material stability, material stability to the Empress. And the Knight of Wands is offering this, this passion, some sort of excited passion. Uh, Not necessarily as much stability for the fact that, like, he's moving. It's, there's wind blowing, like, he's in the desert. But at the same time, behind the Knight of Pentacles is that river of blood. The Knight of Wands is fiery. The Knight of Pentacles is earthy. The Empress is staring straight ahead. She's not looking at either of them. And the Knight of Pentacles is slightly removed from the Empress. Sorry for that long ass pause. Um, it's funny too, because like in the main spread for this one, like the Ace of Pentacles, the the very main pentacle, like with it being the focal point, it's being pushed down by the divine hand of God. So it's funny that the Knight of Pentacles comes out directly above it with this smaller pentacle and he's like, but I have this. And it's like, but that's not even. And like I noticed like the disappointed Adam, like he's looking over here at Eve, but what if he's looking past Eve because the way that these are set up in my spread is that like there's the clouds here that the angel is in and then the cloud ends here and the hand comes out right and there is Adam right there and Eve right there. So what if he's looking past Eve to look at the giant pentacle and the reason that he has that look on his face like he's like what the fuck is because the pentacle is being pushed down and he's the one that's trying to like this is in the beginning. Adam and Eve but like later on is and like Eve is like and in, she's innocent she's just looking at the divine like she don't know what's going on she's got a snake behind her and everything like she don't fucking know what's going on but as she comes into her empress position like she is quite fulfilled she is self-fulfilled um she's in her divine feminine and is at peace, she's calm, everything looks very nice for her. Um, and that is now when <laughs> these, cause like even in this one, like when she's, when she's acting this way, like Adam's looking at her, but like, like I said, like he's potentially looking past her to look at the larger pentacle. Um, 
which is what he's really after. Meanwhile, the King of Wands isn't even paying her any attention. He's turned away from her in this one. Like, from where I have it set, he's turned away from... Um, well, I have it set like this, so he's turned away from her. Um, so yeah, the King of Passion is like... Not interested in probably because she's f fucking just out there, right? But then, like... When we've got the knights coming at her, like, the knight of passion, he's closer to her. Like, he's 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 made his way. Um, and he is full on coming at her. Like, this, this horse, this knight has a lot of passion. If you can see that horse's position. And he's got this fire on him and everything's blowing. And he's, like, he's very passionate. Um, where the knight of pentacles, like I said, is offering the sense of stability and security with this little pentacle that he's got. The Empress is seemingly uninterested in either. Really. But the she actually came up in the spread with the Knight of Wands, so I would say that he's he's got a closer chance, it seems. Especially because the Knight of Pentacles wasn't even part of this spread. He came out as a clarifier. So he's, like, really in the background at this point. Um... In fact, he very well might be in the actual background of her card because she's in this like nice area. There's a little stream, but she's got all there's a stream right here. She's got all these uh, trees, and then you know that she's surrounded by. And then the Knight of Pentacles, like in the distance, like I said, there's this river of blood. But there's also the trees over here where it starts, where the blood starts to not be so prevalent. So maybe it's actually that it's it's not coming down from the hills. Maybe it's coming up this way where like it's eventually just turning into clear water um and the water is clear once they get to the empress and she's in her safe space and he's like all the way back in her distance which is interesting because the knight of wands is really kind of completely somewhere else um he's coming out of nowhere he's coming out of nowhere with all that passion um and like a, yeah at the beginning of the spread like the King of Wands is the Knight of Wands when he's when he's more matured, and the Lovers also came out with it. And the in between between them is the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. And like the way that I saw it at first was that the King of Wands and the Lovers were connected somehow. And like I said, in order to get to the King of Wands, like and the Lovers, and I was confused about it, but that makes sense because like the only reason he's turned is because the lovers is like the beginning but this is also as the ending of this or as the maturation of this spread into this spread um it to me is reading that like the empress has done the work she's moved away from the things that weren't serving her she's worked moved away from the energies that weren't serving her and has moved into a place of comfort and peace uh, within herself she doesn't need anyone and that is what's drawn the knights towards her. But the knight of passion seems to have the upper hand. Uh, they look the same. They, I don't know if you can see, but like they look like the same guy. And the... The knight of wands, I mean the king of wands, has, has the upper hand over the pentacles because even with the greatest pentacle it's still being it's still being put down and pressed down that that's not that's not the focus point that's not the focus point in fact the lovers has no the lovers technically has two wands in it on either side although one is you know the tree with the snake and one is a tree on fire um which is so interesting too because wasn't i just talking about like how like the fires were necessary in order for something better to grow. Um, and maybe that's why I keep getting distracted by my cactus too, because like they're not doing the, they're not, they, they're not in the great state that they were in when I first got them. However, what I noticed is that like in the same ways that like there's been like death of like the original plants that I was looking at, like they've kind of, they just got, they took a hit from being in the fucking hot car for days. Um, there's also all this new growth 
all these cute little like tiny new babies that are growing and they're very strong and they're very cute and um, they're very durable and uh, like there's like even little flowers growing on my jade plant and, like there's just these there's there's all this new growth going on and I remember like if you've watched these videos then you'll know what I'm talking about because when I was doing my yoga the other day I started having this like weird past life regression thing going on and I started weeping and like in that I remember like one of my ancestors like coming along beside of me an older woman um coming along and putting her, her arm over me white hair and um in my head you know I was seeing like my plants rotting she was like don't think about that think about the new life that comes up and like in my head like I watched what was rat just like you know how like AI videos kind of like shift into fucking who knows what out of all the other stuff like it just comes out of nowhere it was like that but it was like all of these like new sprouts and all this green and it just like flooded with green um it was really really beautiful and it was really impactful and the next morning is when I realized that I had like little little new growths growing and little flowers growing um, so yeah, I find that all pleasant. I find that moving in, you know, kind of feels some type of way. Um, so when these two cards came out, then these were supposed to be the finishers, right? And to kind of pull everything together. I kind of already pulled everything together. It kind of forced me to. The two that came out are the Nine of Swords in the upright and the Two of Wands in the upright, which is actually a really cool card. Um, and for a second, I had like the way that I moved and even when these came out, I'm pretty sure that they fell on the floor. They just fell upright. So I picked them up. This one had gotten turned to the side and Generally, I'll take that. When I turn it to the side, I'm noticing that the swords are now upright. Instead of pointing, when it was like this, it seemed ominous. When it's like this, it doesn't seem as ominous. Um, when it's on its side, the swords are upright, which means that they're facing down and away from the two of swords. I mean, the two of wands. This two of wands is really... It's just very beautiful to me. Um, you know, there's a man holding a globe and he has he's holding one of the wands and then there's a wand behind him that's stabilized. Um, and he's looking out into the world and he has his globe and he almost seems like a like either some type of like topographer, some type of what do they call like a map maker, um, some type of adventurer. He seems like a traveler, um who's kind of mapping out his next quest. It just seems so pleasant. And the fact that it's the last card and stuff seems great. This Nine of Swords really threw me off because it seemed like it was negative, but then it got turned on the side and it just seems... Right, like put away all of those, all of the worry. Put away the worry, put away the doubt. Put away the fears that keep you up at night, these weird nightmares and stuff like that, like, you know, because there's like this weird war going on in his bed, right? Um, don't let those things get to you. In fact, be stabilized, you know, like the sword's like moving from that way to this way, like be stabilized in them. They're... Really, I mean, this falls right under the Five of Cups in reverse, and so really it's like they're, you know, they're done and over with. Those are things that don't matter anymore. It's weird to me because I do tend to put so much emphasis on my dreams, or like I, I feel very much for them. Um, my dreams mean a lot to me, and they hit me very deep, and um, I focus a lot on them. And that's because they're so personal, right? But like... Well, and also, like, why would I be being shown these things and stuff? But, like, a lot of it's, that's that's what dreams are for, right? It's hard when, like, so many of my dreams are so symbolic and so, like, they seem like visions and stuff like that. But, like, ultimately, our dreams really are just, like, our subconscious playing out 
suppressed emotion uh, sorry it's suppressed emotions that um we haven't properly processed or don't know how to process in the conscious um or like don't even necessarily need to it's kind of like the work that goes on behind the scenes in your computer you know it's not the main stuff that you're looking at on the screen it's not the stuff that you need to worry about it's all of the other functionings that are happening and it's like our conscious kind of like peeks in and sees what's going on um so like yeah Maybe it's just not so necessary to like always fixate so much on my dreams. And I guess that, yeah, that that's good. That's good. Cause like the dreams last night, like as intense as they were and as crazy as they were, and they were really like, like in particular, like sometimes the dreams shift as intense as they are, like they'll like shift scenes and stuff. Like this was like one continuous story that seemed really intense. Um, but I think I'm just not really, I don't need to worry about it. I just don't need to worry about it. I think if there's something else I need to worry about, it'll come up in another dream. Um, but what I need to be focusing on ultimately in order to get to this space is just what, what the path is, what my next move is. You know, I have the wands. I have the wand in my hand. I also have the wand behind me um, for support, you know, and... Um, I have the whole world in my hands. So I get to make those choices. But it's also crazy too, because like the two ones that I have, like the Knight of Wands and the King of Wands, you know, the King of Wands is like away from the Empress. She, he's the one be, behind her. And the Knight of Wands is coming and like that's like the one right here. I don't know, that's cute. Sorry, Knight of Pentacles. <laughs> it's funny because, like, even that, like, the opposing between the two, like, they're looking at each other, they're both holding something in their hands, but, like, this guy's just got the one little pentacle. And, like, when we've already seen the Ace of Pentacles at the beginning and it's already been push down like we already know that that's not where our focus needs to be like this just doesn't seem like it's gonna do the trick we're like this guy's got the whole world in his hands you know he's got the help of the two ones I don't know. That seems pleasant. I don't know if that seems resolute to anyone else, but to me, it like is giving me a cute little feeling of hope for the future. And just a reminder not to focus on the little things, not to focus on the things that are past, not to focus on the things that don't matter. If it's not, if it's not resonating with me right now, I don't need to worry about it. Right? Same thing I'm sitting here telling the whole time. If it's not for you, then it's not for you and that's okay. And, like, even if somebody's trying to give it to you, that don't mean it's for you. You know, you don't have to receive it. Yes, it might be being offered to you, and it might even be a good thing. It's not like being offered a pentacle isn't a good thing. But maybe it's not the best thing. Maybe putting down the concept that it is the best thing is what's going to actually move you into, into the right thing, which is having the whole world in your hands. Receiving the world at a price is maybe not what's going to end up giving you the power over, you know, not the world, but like when I see the world in your hands, it's like the world is your oyster, right? Like you get to do with the world what you choose to. If I were to sell my soul for power or for fame or for any sort of anything, if I were selling my soul for that, if I, if it were a trade-off, if it were a monetary thing, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, the world would then not be at my fingertips. I'm now entrapped to those concepts and am now having to play a game in order to benefit. In fact, I've put myself in an even smaller prison than I was in prior to even being allowed, you know, or being offered that. Um, so 
So interesting. It's so interesting. To, uh, yeah, that was, that was a good one. That was kind of a personal read, really. Um, but it was good. And hopefully it did something for you. I got to pee, so I'm going to end this. But hopefully all of that talking that I did prior to was educational. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I always hope that these things, that anytime my presence is around, that it's a blessing. Um, and so that's what I'll leave you with. A little blessing. Have a good day. Love ya.